Hey YouTube, this is John from BetterThanYourself.com, and today I want to make some fermented radishes. Got these radishes at Safeway. They were on sale for 10 for 10. Of course, they only had eight bunches by the time I got there, but I grabbed what I could. Here's seven dollars worth of radishes. These are super radishes, super ripe, nice and firm, no blemishes on them. To start processing them, what we're going to need to do is remove the leaves, remove the roots, remove the stems. We're going to trim them. We're going to clean them up and hold them in a brine and, and, some, and we'll let them ferment for a couple of weeks. Super as a side, chop them up on salad, eat them like you would on a relish tray. Seems like the family can't get enough of these. I started making these, and once I got people to taste them, I think I made some real fans in the house. When you're processing a lot of vegetables like this, you want to try to do things in stages, just for efficiency's sake. Um, take the leaves off, put them all in a big bowl. Next step is to trim them. Set yourself up with a little workstation, big bowl of vegetables, a bowl of trimmings, and then a colander to catch your processed vegetables in. Then you can go through one by one without a lot of wasted effort, get all your vegetables trimmed and ready to ferment. Once everything is trimmed, you can give everything a good final rinse. These were pretty clean when I brought them home. This is a one gallon glass anchor hocking jar. Um, people buy them and put cookies in them. I like to ferment things in them. I make my kombucha in these. I'm going to pinkle my radishes in these. They're just super versatile jars. Check the links below. I've, I've got the link to Amazon so you can pick up a couple of these jars. This ferment requires uh, the addition of some brine. Make sure you use chlorine free water. Chlorine kills bacteria. Bacteria is what we're using to do the fermentation, so make sure you've got that chlorine-free water. The recipe here is three tablespoons of salt to two liters of water. Get everything stirred together real well. Make sure the salt that you use is non-iodized salt as well. Again, just like we're avoiding chlorine, we're avoiding iodine. All of these additives are in our food supply, and they kill bacteria. So if you're going to start fermenting, you really need to be on the lookout for a lot of these uh, preservatives that we don't just take for granted, but they kill our bacteria. So we're going to kill a couple of bacteria here with this salt water, hopefully. Um, again, this is just a, a light brine, and it will keep the bacterial count low enough to uh, keep the, the radishes safe. Here you can see me adding the garlic to the ferment. When you uh, when I make dill pickles, I always add a lot of garlic. There's a lot of antibacterial properties in garlic. It's one of the reasons why eating raw garlic is so healthy for you. But there's um, just like we add dill to our pickle ferment and salt to our pickle ferment, we add garlic to our pickle ferment. All of these things have antimicrobial properties that we're going to take advantage of. Again, to keep the bad bacteria off our vegetables until that lactobacilli can take over and protect us from the, the bacteria. If you have a jar of pickles going, grab some of the solution from the pickle jar, add it to the, to the new jar. This is a super source for lots of bacteria to get your fermentation off to a good start. This is a great kickstarting method to ensure that you're going to have a good batch of pickles. So here I've got my air
Just go ahead and stir that old pickle juice in. Get out any extra leaves. All right, here we've been fermenting for a couple of days. I think it's been about three days. You can see my kombucha there up on the right. Um, and the radishes are starting to lose that, that red. All the red is dissolving into the, into the brine. These look like they're doing really well. I think these are going to be delicious. And day five, looks like I've got some mold forming. Um, another problem here, these couple of radishes were exposed to air. I've got brown rot. These radishes are soft. They're literally rotten. Um, I've got some mold forming. The mold I can get with this ladle, if I'm careful, just ladle off this white funk here. It's nothing bad. It happens pretty typical for a vegetable ferment like this, especially a, a, a brine-based one. Um, I'm not even convinced this is mold. It's kind of like a waxy um, skim on the surface of the brine liquid here. I'm just going to take it off and to pick out the extra brown ones. To prevent this in the future, I've got a, just a bag with some of uh, my saline in it. I'm going to zip this shut and use this for my weight to hold everything down below the, the brine. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, the brine actually acts as an air proofing to make sure that there's no oxygen touching your vegetables. Uh, get everything underneath there. You want to make sure that everything is out of the air. Anything that's going to have contact with air is going to rot. We're not rotting vegetables, folks. We're fermenting them. I'll leave these in the cabinet for probably another week. Um, I'll, I'll taste them every couple of days and see what kind of progress I'm making. When I feel like I've got a good tartness to the radishes, I will put them in the refrigerator in a smaller jar and then just top them up with the, with the brine solution and they'll be re ready for snacking anytime. So that's pickled radishes folks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and uh, subscribe if you like my channel.